Greetings, Earthlings. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister, and I'm speaking to you from the future. In Taiwan, uh, we're just a few hours in the future, uh, but we managed to fight the pandemic rather successfully with no lockdowns and fight the infodemic also rather successfully with no takedowns. How would we do it? How did we do it? In the very beginning of Taiwan's democracy, we always had this idea of people, public, private partnership. The order, very important. The social sector sets the norms, for example, around the real-time open data publication of all the campaign donation and expenditure. And then the public sector takes that in because the social sector having a higher legitimacy than the public sector can demand the public sector to take it in. And when the National Audit Office started to publish such campaign donation and expenditure, then the two of us, the two sectors, apply the pressure to the business sector, not only the domestic ones, but also global ones, such as Facebook. We basically said, Facebook can either conform to the social sector norms, where people originally went into the audit office, took out paper copies, scanned it, and did OCR to make sure that it's structured and reusable. You either ad adhere to this during our election, or you may face social sanction. So Facebook did the right thing. Actually, Taiwan, last year, in 2019, was the first jurisdiction where Facebook worked with the local civic tech communities to publish the structured open data of all the advertisements during the election and bond all the foreign sponsored ones. Now, I'm just saying that Facebook may be doing this um, for their, I don't know, CSR, PR, civic integrity, but without the outside game, without the social sector, without this uh, implicit threat of social sanctioning and the capability of the Gov Zero collective, G Zero V movement to go through with it. I do not think Facebook will adjust that easily or that quickly. This is about the infodemic. So what is this outside game? In Taiwan, we have GOV, the TW, as the domain name for most digital services run by the government. There's literally tens of thousands of people online every day to look at these digital services and see if they can make something that G0V.CW. By changing an O to a zero, you get into the shadow government that not only is more fun, is more fair, but also changes more quickly. All the GovZero's work use creative commons and the free software principles. And because of that, the open source licensing strategy and development strategy Make sure that when the government sees the light, the fork becomes merged. So as the digital minister slash GovZero active contributor, we have then taken the citizen prototyped, for example, air pollution sensing network, the airbox. More than tens of thousands of primary schoolers, teachers, parents, people who care about air pollution and climate change in their balconies, in their schools, set up those very inexpensive boxes, less than 100 US dollars each, and every place in Taiwan is guaranteed broadband as human right. So for unlimited data, 10 megabits per second connection at just 16 US dollars per month, anywhere in Taiwan, those air boxes can run in a timely fashion to report the local air quality like PM 2.5 to distributed ledgers. Anywhere in town, if you don't have that kind of broadband access, it's my fault personally. Because of that, the social sector climate sensing network 
had a higher legitimacy than either the government or the business sectors. And then, because we can't beat them, we joined them from the government. We set up the CIVO IoT platform, CI, the Taiwan, the GOV, the TW, that not only made sure that a mutually accountable distributed ledger can be joined by high-speed, privacy-preserving computation in a national center of high-speed computing, the top 20 supercomputer, or top 10 if you count energy efficiency, uh, but also that the business sector is pressured so that in the industrial parks, where the primary schoolers probably cannot break and enter and install air boxes, the government owns the lamps in those parks. And so we also work with industrial parks and then install air boxes designed by the social sector within the industrial parks. During the pandemic, this infrastructure proved to be very, very valuable. For we worked with the pharmacist earlier in February to ration out the mask to make sure that everyone in Taiwan, more than three quarters of people within one short month, have access to mask, but also have good hand sanitation habits that would then put the R value to be under one. The community pharmacists already trusted by the elderly and the young alike. Make sure that everyone has a fair share of mask using the single payer national health card. The single payer health card made it clear that for people who develop any symptom, COVID-like or not, it's cheaper for them to go to a clinic and run a diagnosis with a doctor and go to a pharmacist who will then ration out the mask or before uh, they go to clinic, they can also already get some ration masks without incurring any financial or social burden. It's cheaper to get a mask and go to a clinic than doing a drive through test or any kind of test. And because of this, it's not a social stigma to talk about COVID-like symptoms. So the people who remember SARS in 2003, SARS 1.0, this time around, of course, automatically put on their masks. But for younger people, people under 30 years old who didn't have a memory of SARS, it did take some convincing. How do we convince them? Again, through social innovation. We have a very cute spokesdoc, and that says in very large letters, wear a mask to protect yourself from your own unwashed hands. Now think about this. This talk is about rational self-interest. This argument holds even if when you're alone. And this also made sure that everyone can remix those messages and make masks not only something about protecting yourself, but something like a fashion item or something. Indeed, in April, early April, there was a young boy that watched um, the daily 2 p.m. Uh, live stream broadcasting of the Central Epidemic Command Center and heard a message about wearing masks to protect mm, yourself from your own hands. But he called the toll-free number 1922 asking, hey, you're rationing on mask and all I get is pink medical mask. I'm a boy. I don't want to wear a mask to go to school because all I have are pink masks. My classmates would laugh at me. The very next day, the next 2 p.m., everyone in the CECC, regardless of their gender, wore pink medical mask. Minister Chen Shizhong of Health and Welfare even said that Pink Panther was his childhood hero. So the boy became the most hit boy in the class. Not only he has the color that the heroes wear, but only he has the color that the hero's hero wear. And this is social innovation. Not only gender mainstreaming, but also amplifying the best innovations from the social sector through the public sector to the business sector. As a digital minister, I'm not working for the government. I'm working with the government. My job description is literally a call to action. And so now I will read you my job description and invite you to join this people-public-private partnership 
it goes like this. When we see the internet of things, let's make it an internet of beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we hear that the singularity is near, let us always remember the plurality is here. Thank you for listening. Live long and prosper. Thank you. Woo.